Good morning, YouTube. The good folks at Drock sent me this DC to DC buck converter to review and test. I'll put a link to Drock's website and to the converter information page in the video description at the bottom of the video here. So this is a DC to DC buck converter, meaning it produces a DC output at a lower voltage than the DC input. Or in the AC world, it's like a step-down transformer. It has an 8 amp and 100 watt nominal output current and power rating, and up to 12 amps maximum output current with a cooling fan. And there are provisions on the PCB for powering that fan. More on that later. They also have another model rated at 15 amps nominal output. The DC input voltage range is 5 to 40 volts. The DC output voltage range is 1.2 to 36 volts. Uh, Jim Connor tested one of these converters a few weeks ago on his channel and gave it good marks. I'll put a link to his video here if you want to check out his tests for maximum voltage, current, and power output. He did leave out a few characteristics in his review and I wanted to cover that in my video. First off, let's take a quick look at the Drock buck converter itself. It has a compact size measuring 60 millimeters long, 43 millimeters wide, and 22 millimeters tall with four 3 millimeter mounting screw holes. Here's the input power connection, the input fuse, and a output voltage adjust potentiometer and I have the terminals fitted with 16 gauge stranded wire that's about 1.3 millimeters squared and that seems to be about the largest size wire that will fit clockwise on the adjustment screw increases the output voltage and then in the middle are the input and output filtering caps the inductor and then the switching components and regulator mounted on heat sinks. The capacitors are all rated at 50 volts, 105 degrees C, and the input caps are labeled as low ESR devices. And this may use an XL4016 buck converter regulator, but I can't verify this because you can't get down to see the top of the devices here. That XL4016 does have a 40 volt input limit, so that would jive with the device specifications. And the output power connection is over here on the other side. There's a green power LED. And then over next to the output connector is an unpopulated pin header location. It's labeled plus, minus, and then fan. And if we flip the unit over here, this can be used to install a pin header for a cooling fan if desired. And you'll see the two through holes, and then there's three little solder tabs, and they're labeled V in, blank, and V out. The center tab is connected to the fan plus pin, so by bridging either V in to the center or V out to the center tab, you can select how the fan is powered. So for example, if you're running 24 volts input and 12 volts output and wanted to add a 12 volt cooling fan, you would connect the V out tab to the center pin and then the, install a fan header and that would supply 12 volts for your fan. So that's pretty handy because it saves the headache of trying to splice in some power wires here to run your fan from. And there's a few discrete components on the back including the high current diode. So I want to test this Drock converter for efficiency and also to see how it performs with low input to output voltage differences. I want to test this for use with typical 12 volt lead acid battery voltages as the input and then constant 12 volt DC output. So I'll be using two different types of loads for this test and then we'll compare how the Drock buck converter 
compares with some alternative devices. So the first load will be a typical 12 volt DC LED strip light. The second load will be an electronic device with a 12 volt DC power input. So stay tuned for the next video when I'll use this buck converter to power a typical 12 volt LED strip light. Questions welcome in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Subscribe to my channel to be notified when that next video is posted. And as always, thanks for watching.